Yes, guys. Question number seven. Prepare a value-added statement for the year ended 31st March 2012 and a reconciliation statement between PBT and the gross value added from the P&L statement for the year ended 31st March 2012 given below. A uh, statement of P&L which has been given below and with the additional information saying that sales represent net sales after adjusting discounts, returns, and sales tax. Operating cost includes 82 lakh 50 thousand as wages, salaries, and other benefits. And bank overdraft is temporary in nature. Simple problem for value added statements. Let's try to put it. Value added statement of value added statement for the year ended 31st March 2012. First part is gross value added. Start with sales, all rupees in thousands. Twenty four four hundred. Less cost of bought out goods and services. <clears throat> First one operating cost. Operating cost is 21,250. There's some information which is given down below. It includes 82,50,000 of wages, salaries, and other benefits. They should be value applied towards employees, excluding wages, salaries, and other benefits. Yes, guys, 21,250 minus 8250. The resultant figure is 12,000 something. 13,000. Next, excise duty. Either you can show it as a reduction from sales or take it under value applied towards garment. Interest on bank OD should be considered. Short term finance or working capital loan it is. Overdraft 75. Interest of debentures will not be considered. That's it 13,075. This will give you value added from trading. Manufacturing and trading activities. Eleven thousand three twenty five. Add other income. 508 and my gross value added $11,833 and go for the statement of value applied Try to place one by one. Value applied to employees. Only one figure existing that is wages, salaries and other benefits.
द अमाउंट फॉर दिस इज एट टू फाइव जीरो टू गवर्नमेंट एक्साइज ड्यूटी वन थाउजेंड वन टेन प्रोविजन फॉर टैक्स थ्री ट्वेंटी वन फोर थ्री जीरो टोटल वैल्यू अप्लाई टूवर्ड्स गवर्नमेंट टू फाइनेंसर्स और प्रोवाइडर्स ऑफ फाइनेंस इंटरेस्ट ऑन नाइन परसेंट डिबेंचर्स Twelve hundred to shareholders. Dividend proposed forty-eight, and the last one. towards expansion and replacement of assets first one depreciation replacement of assets Amount of depreciation there is four zero five. That's it. Hundred. Total is nine not five. Total value applied. A plus B plus C plus D plus E. Eight two five zero one four three zero twelve hundred forty eight and nine nine not five. Total should be back to double one eight double three. Should be equal to your value added. Continue for the reconciliation statement. Start with PBT. Check your profit before tax. All rupees in thousands. PBT is eight sixty eight. Continue. Check what are the items not considered in gross value added. PBT. The first item not considered is depreciation. We have considered it under value applied towards expansion and replacement of assets. Four zero five. Next. Interest on nine percent debentures also value applied towards providers of finance. Twelve hundred. Next, ODRAF we considered excise duty. I haven't considered excise duty. We took it under value applied towards garment. One thousand one hundred. Next, in the operating cost we add wages salaries. <coughs> 
How much is the value? 500 so what was before payment of proposed dividend fan what is before proposed dividend profit after tax plus 320 68 pbt so these three values include wages here we included basically it is the entire statement we are preparing again in a different form that's it Yes, guys, economic value added. EVA is normally evaluated by bankers while lending funds. Normally, whenever any bank has to lend funds, there is one of the figures that they are really interested to look at. Economic value added can be given with the formula NOPAT minus ROC. NOPAT stands for Net Operating Profit After Tax. ROC is nothing but Return on capital employed. <clears throat> Whenever I'm talking about net operating profit after tax, now what are we trying to consider here? We are trying to consider profits after tax. It's not just profit after tax so deduct all non-operating expenses the major non-operating expenses that I get is always interest interest on long-term funds is a non-operating expenditure because it is of financial nature it is a financial nature, it is of no, no way an operating nature. So I'll have to, sorry, I'll have to add it back. We have already deducted that in computation of profit after tax. So I'm adding it back minus non-operating incomes. Invest
But let's say I have some investments in fixed deposit. I was into manufacturing activity. I just had a fixed deposit and such fixed deposit is yielding a return. I'll call that as non-operating incomes. Remember, whenever we are adjusting non-operating incomes and non-operating expenses, we are adjusting it to profit after tax. So these items are also supposed to be after tax. These items are compulsory to be after, you know, after tax. So let's say I have an expenditure of 100, which is considered as non-operating in nature. So how do we add it back 100 into 1 minus tax? Because I have to adjust it for tax each and every time. Now this resultant figure is called as NOPAT, net operating profit after tax. Incomes also similar way guys, but dividends we normally don't adjust tax. Because let's say if it is a dividend receipt from a particular company, income so no into 1 minus tax do not do into 1 minus tax for dividends interest income into 1 minus tax compulsory got it how do you calculate return on capital employed there is nothing but capital employed by WACC what is WACC weighted average cost of capital Capital employed is always talking about long term funds. Either I can have a debt fund or a equity share of preferences. Whatever it is, all these funds are called as long term funds. How do we calculate WACC then? WACC can be calculated. WACC is equal to KE into E by E plus D plus KD into D by E plus D. D stands for debt, E stands for equity, KE is cost of equity and KD is cost of debt. And whenever you are talking about WACC, it is always after tax. So when you calculate KD, let's say interest is 12%. Then the cost of debt is 12% pre-tax. How do you get post-tax? 12% into 1 minus tax rate. Always WACC is after tax. Because cost of equity as such is always after tax. Cost of debt is always pre-tax. So into 1 minus T will give you what is cost of debt. If I have preference shares, I'll have one more addition here. Because it will be cost of preference shares into P by E plus P plus D. Your whatever preference shares are also supposed to be added. So whenever I talk about capital employed, capital employed is a equity shares plus preference shares plus long term debt all three combined is called as capital employed now this is your EVA guys stick down
Yes, guys, let's solve some problems. Question number 9, first bit. Debt capital is 12%, 2000 crores. Equity is 500 crores and reserves are 7500 crores. Equity plus reserves are both called as equity funds. So my total equity funds are 8000 crores and my debt funds are 2000 crores. With the total capital employed being 10,000 crores. Risk free rate of return is 9% and your beta factor is 1.05. Your market risk, your market rate of return is 19% with a risk premium of 10%. Risk premium is nothing but market rate of risk minus risk free rate. RM minus RF. So net operating profits after tax, he has already given you NOPAT as 2100 crores. Tax rate applicable is 30%. We are supposed to calculate your EVA. Already your net operating profit after tax is given. So all we are concentrating on is to get ROC. You already know that the capital employed is 10,000. You know this value. But you have to multiply it with WACC, weighted average cost of capital. We need to calculate this. So put down a heading WACC. First find of cost of equity. KE cost of equity is equal to can be given by a CAPM model. RF plus beta into RM minus RF. Risk free rate plus beta into market rate minus risk free rate. Risk free rate is 9%. Beta is 1.05 beta is a measure of risk and market rate is 19 risk free rate is 9 so I guess this will total to 19.5 percent cost of equity is always after tax you don't have to do anything here calculate KD then cost of debt I need after tax now normally when I see 12% debt capital then 12% is the rate of debt but that 12% is pre-tax into 1 minus tax rate tax rate here is 30% so 0.7 into 12 is 8.4% I guess this is cost of debt debt is 2000 equity is 8000 equity is nothing but share capital plus reserve so calculate WACC. KE into E by E plus D plus KD into D by D plus D. Nineteen point five into debt is eight thousand, debt plus equity is ten thousand plus 8.4 into 2000 by 10,000. Calculate 80% plus 20%. 80% of 19.5. 20% of 8.4 will give you WACC. Just 17 point change. Seventeen point two Once you get WICC, you know capital employed is 10,000. You know no pad. Calculate EVA. EVA is equal to economic value added, no pad minus 
ROC. No pat is net operating profit after tax is 2100. ROC WACC 17.28 percent of 10,000. I think this is 372. Yes guys, go for the next one. B bit in the same question. Ninth one. Share capital is 2000, reserve and surplus is 4000. That will give you a total equity fund of 6000 with a long term debt of 400. My total capital employed is 6400 then. Tax rate is 30% and risk free rate is 9%. Market rate is 16%. Interest is 40, beta factor is 1.05, profit before interest and in tax is 2000. So, first let's try to calculate no pad from this. Start with the given information given. This is PBIT, profit before interest and in tax. All rupees in lakhs. This is 2000 PBIT. First reduction should be for the interest and then for the tax. Interest. He has given you that the interest is 40 lakhs. Then I will get PBT 1960. Less tax. Tax rate is 30%. 30% is 5. 88. Eight. This will give you PAT. 1372. But I want net operating profit after tax, so add back interest. We have seen here, profit after tax plus interest on long term funds should be adjusted for tax. So this will be considered as 40 into 1 minus tax rate, 1 minus 30%. 28 add back, no part is 40. 1400 net operating profit after tax is 14 percent for 1400 get ke and kd cost of equity using the same capm model risk free rate is nine percent Plus beta factor is 1.05. Market return is 16%. Minus risk free rate of 9%. So this will be 7%. 7 into 1.05 is 7.35. This total is 16.35%. What is KD then? Check cost of debt. Cost of debt, there is no percentage given, but I can calculate, I guess, right? what is the long term debt? 400 lakhs. What is the interest? 40 lakhs. 40 lakhs and 400 lakhs is basically 10%. 10% pre-tax into 1 minus 30%, 7% is cost of debt. 
let's calculate WICC then. WICC is equal to KE 16.35 into E by E plus D. What is the equity funds? Equity fund is share capital plus reserves and surplus 6000. E plus D, equity plus debt is 6400 because your debt portion is only 400. Now this will be 6000 by 6400 plus debt fund 7% into 400 by 6400. And from there get WACC. Yes, guys, WACC is? Seven six five. It's okay, round it off a little bit. EVA. Economic value added is no pat, 1400. Minus ROC, WACC, 15.765% of my capital employed totally is 6,400. And this is 1,400 minus 1,0. Total EVA is 390. Approximately. <coughs> there is some approximation that we have used in calculating WACC. Question number 10, sorry, question number 9, prosperous bank criteria as well, it will give loans to companies that have an economic value added greater than 0 for the past 3 years on an average. Bank is considering lending money to a small company that has an EVA characteristic shown below. The data relating to the company is as follows. Average operating income after tax equals to 25 lakhs per year for the last 3 years. That itself is no pattern. Average operating profits after tax. Operating profit after tax is nothing but net operating profit after tax. 25 lakhs. Average of the total assets for the 3 years is 75 lakhs. And weighted average cost of capital is approximately 10%. The average current liabilities for the last 3 years are 15 lakhs. Does the company meet the criteria of the positive EVA? How do you calculate? No PAT minus ROC, written on capital employed. How do you get capital employed? No equity, no debt. I can do total assets minus outside liabilities. That is also capital employed only. What is the total assets given? 75 lakhs. Current liabilities are 15 lakhs. Deduct, you will get net assets or capital employed. And solve the problem. So let's solve it.
average operating profits after tax are 25 lakhs. I know total assets and current liabilities, then I can say my capital employed or long term funds I can write this as total assets minus current liabilities. It's given to us total assets are uh, 75 and current liabilities are 15. This will sum up to 60 lakhs. WACC is given to us already. WACC can be approximately taken at 10%. EVA is no PAT minus ROC written on capital employed. No PAT is given to us as 25 lakhs minus written on capital employed. 10% of capital employed being 60 lakhs. That is 6 lakhs. 25 lakhs minus 6 lakhs is 19 lakhs. So the question was basically should the does the company meet the bank criteria of positive EVA? Absolutely. EVA is greater than zero. So the company meets the bank criteria. Let's see the next one. A company has a capital base of a 1 crore and has earned a profit to the tune of 11 lakhs. My return on investments in a particular industry to which the company belongs is 12.5%. If the services of a particular executive are acquired by the company, it is expected that the profits will increase by 2.5 lakhs over and above the target profit. Determine the amount of maximum bid price that a particular executive and what is the maximum salary that can be offered to him. So let's check guys. It's a small illustration or the way we can use EVA to determine that fellow's salary and what is the bid price. Bid price basically means at what value can I buy that particular services. In the sense normally when a person is being taken over from one more company for breaking the contract with the earlier company, the recruiting company should pay some consideration to it. That is called as bid price. That means let's say someone is employed with Infosys and that particular employee is now being hired by TCS. So for breaking the contract with Infosys, TCS has to pay Infosys a small amount. Now that is called as a bid price and is asking you what that is. So let's check. given information for us is that the capital base is 1 crore since everything is in lakhs I'll put this as 100 lakhs next they earn profits to the extent of 11 lakhs leave it aside my return on investments ROI expected for the industry is 12.5% So my expected return twelve and a half percent of hundred lakhs is twelve point five lakhs. What is the actual return that he is getting? 
actual return they are earned profits only to the tune of 11 lakhs this way we can say that EVA is minus 1.5 negative EVA is earning lower than what the average would have earned What if the new person is employed? If the new person is expected to be employed, he is expecting that the profits will increase by 2.5 lakhs. So once I get 2.5 lakhs here, my EVA automatically will become positive. So what is the maximum salary that I can offer? You have to equate EVA to 0 then. How will you get EVA 0? If he is employed, it will increase by 2.5. So minus 1.5 will now start showing at 1. So if I can equate it to 0, what I can pay that fellow is 1 lakh. If I pay 1 lakh to him and he gives me an extra income of 2.5 lakhs, basically you can understand that the EVA will exactly show 0. So maximum salary that I can pay is only 1 lakh. Now it is a negative EVA. So when 2.5 lakhs if he is earning, the company will get a positive EVA of 1 lakh. Now that positive EVA of 1 lakh can be paid as a salary to at least maintain an EVA of 0 for the company. Now he is asking you what is the maximum bid price. Maximum bid price can be given as maximum salary divided by return expected or return on investment expected. 1 lakh divided by 12.5%. This will give you an answer of 8 or something. If I pay 8 lakhs for him, my capital base will increase by 8 lakhs. So instead of having 100 lakhs as capital base, I will start getting 108 lakhs as capital base. 108 lakhs into 12.5%, my expected return will be 13.5 lakhs, 1 lakh extra. So my expected return will be 108 into 12.5, that will become 13.5. Now my actual return after that fellow is employed is again 13.5. Because he is giving me an extra return of 2.5 over and above the existing return of 11. So ultimately what will become? EVA again will become 0.